Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Wendy for your Light of Cloth. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to our NHL Pearls of Wisdom because we have Steel Flyers and Bill Barker again. They, I got all your letters saying, are you going to have them on again? And I'm like, well, of course we're going to have them on again. <laughs> Sent them all out. And uh, all the fan letters coming in is just amazing. Thank you for all your letters. And thank you for subscribing and hit the bell, too, because we love that here at Pearlism Industries. Um, okay, we've been doing a series on the uh, NHL playoffs first round. We did a couple of games already, one of which we will find out what the first game is going to be tomorrow because of <laughs> the, the columbus Tampa Bay game going what, two, two and a half games long? Wow, that was amazing. Got to put that in there. But we still have two two series starting tomorrow. And we're going to be looking at, we're going to put them both together because the game went long. We're all kind of pressed for time. We're going to look at the Islanders, Washington Capitals, and the Arizona Coyotes versus the Colorado Avalanche. And we're going to start with the, the uh, New York Islanders, Washington Capitals. Uh, Steel Flyers. Um, this, all of us are Philadelphia fans, so this is a, this is kind of an interesting series. Uh, we, we, we get to have a pretty interesting lean on this. New York Islanders, Washington Capitals, Steel Flyers. What do you think about this series? Uh, how, who has the advantage or doesn't have the advantage or any advantage? Wow. First of all, thank you very much for having me on here. It's a it's a great honor and a privilege to be with two of the absolute best. You guys really need to follow um, Perlo. You really need to be following Joe Boric. These guys are the greatest. Uh, they will get you in the know. They will be feeding your knowledge. So you definitely need to be following that and subscribing and liking for sure. So thank you very much for having me on. Um, we're going to get uh, the – this is like the uh, – this is like the, the Barry Trotz kind of a reunion series. Could we call it that? Yeah. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Can we put it that? The Barry yeah. Trotz reunion? Sure. Should we break out some, some old fashioned uh, 70s music, you know, for some of this, you know, right? Like, <clears throat> look, Capitals, Islanders. Mm. I would not want to be playing in this series. I think this is going to be the most intense series because I think there is some uh, animosity there between the teams because they see each other throughout the year. And I think that, oh man, I, I, uh, I, lean. <laughs> I'm going to lean for the caps. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm going to lean for the caps because I I just feel that the caps have something to prove. And and they're going up against trots and they're kind of coming in a little bit off the back foot because they didn't really slice through the the round robin games, you know what I mean? And they kind of lost a little bit and Ovechkin didn't score against us and even have a point, you know what I mean? So he was held scoreless in one game at very least. So I think, I think Washington's going to come out with a little bit of snarl and I think they're going to have a little bit of edge. And I will say this though, I am going to lean Washington, but I am going to say this. If the Islanders come out and take it to them, and put the points on the board and score and take care of the power play and let their talent come and shine through. And it doesn't matter. I mean, who are they going to have in net? The Islanders? Yeah. Varlamov. Varlamov or, or, or even Grice wasn't that bad, right? You know, so their their lineup of goalies that they have with him, their three goalies that they have with him is not a bad deal. So if the Islanders come out and take it to him, you know how you always talk about that first 10 minutes of the of the game? You know, you have to survive that first 10 minutes. If Washington breaks in that first 10 minutes, then I think it's going to be the Islanders. But I'm going to lean towards Washington because I just think they're just going to – I think they have something to prove against Barry Trotz. 
So you think that they win the first game, they win it. Whoever wins the first game wins it all almost pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And if, and if, and if anything, if anything, it, if like, say the Islanders win the first game, then it'll be back and forth for the next couple of games. And then it's going to be whoever wins the last game. So mm-hmm. it might go the full, it might still go the full seven games, but I think it's still going to be whoever wins the first game. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm lean in Washington. So. Slight lean to Washington. All right. Joe, yeah. What yeah. I just said on the uh, podcast I was on with our always next year, the disciples of Ed, that it's going to be the Islanders. So I'm not going to switch my view there. I don't, I just think the, both teams underperformed obviously coming into the stretch, but the Islanders showed good performance when back. The Capitals really did not. They just squeaked out a win in that one game against yeah. another team that obviously has not shown off good. So, I mean, I think Todd Reardon is an overrated coach personally. I just don't think he gets his players in the right spots, puts them in the right positions. I just don't think he's that great of a coach, and he's going up against one of the better coaches that knows his team because their core is still the same. So that's going to be something that I think gives the Islanders the edge, especially what put me over the edge was how solid Varlamov looked in the first round as well. So I don't think he's all of a sudden going to fall off. But if he does, they do have Grice as well. But I think Varlamov, he's had good playoff stretches before, like when he was back with Colorado and so forth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this might just be one of those stretches for him. So I think they'll get to the next round. Yeah. Um, like I gotta I gotta agree. I kind of agree with both of you in a lot of ways. Um <laughs> I, think, I think Washington does have a lot to do. And they already lost to Trots with the Islanders already. Uh so it's gonna be interesting to see what their pushback is. Or I'm, lack a little, of. I, I'm a little afraid of Holtby, but I mean if Holtby can be big then I think Washington can win this. It really comes down to that to me. I just haven't seen it quite yet, but I'm kind of leaning more towards Joe here. I, 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 Barry Trotz has just constantly proven to be able to overcome with teams so many times. Uh, I also believe Todd Reardon. I don't even think he's overrated. I don't think he really is rated. And if you were to rate him, I would rate him low. <laughs> 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 well, gee, tell us how you really feel about that one, Perlo. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, I would maybe go as far as I'd have to really think about it. Out of the 30 coaches yeah. in our league, I would put him number 30. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Against, against a Barry Trotz led team. Now, on paper, Washington, if, as far as forwards are concerned, at least for sure, should win this game. And if, if We've seen if Ovechkin decides to, he can take over a series. So, yeah. I, I'm looking at the Islanders, though, and I think it'll be like six-ish. You know, that might be the lame number, but everybody likes to say six-ish somewhere around there. Um, am I, I'm i sort of rooting for what – I love Barry Trotz, but I always love Obi. I just like the Obi parties if they ever win the cup. I just want to see that happen again. That was great. That was awesome. Um no, really don't want to see that again. Thanks. Uh, saw enough of it when he won the cup. He pretty much cemented his place uh, in Toronto for the Hall of Fame with winning that cup. But I'm, I'm okay if I spend the rest of my life and I don't see him raise the cup again. I'm good with that. <laughs> and the other thing is the Islanders were getting depth scoring in the first round by – well, Bavillier is right. a very good player, and others yeah. haven't even played their top-notch game yet, similarly to – or flyers, so I think that's going to happen in the second round, and that's what's also going to propel them past Washington because they're just ha- coming in with more momentum. Washington beat that's, a team that in Boston that did yeah. not yeah. look good either. So you just were two teams that didn't look great, and then one team had to win that game. So, right, but, which is that, which is exactly what we talked about in in some of the other series. Is that one of the teams that came out that you know they they just didn't do enough to lose. You know, and and so that's exactly what we got here. And do you would you agree though that whoever wins the first game would win the series? Uh, I don't know. I think this might be one of the more back and forth series because, like I said, 
if Washington wins the first game, I don't think they're very well coached. So Barry Trotz can easily out coach his counterpart to win them another game, and then it'll still go back and forth. Because I think the reason the Capitals, we saw them fall off, was they were doing well because of their talent. And then when they had some issues happen with their team, when guys went out for a couple games and so forth, when you don't have the best coach, you can't plug people into the lineup. So that's that happened and he doesn't adjust as well as Barry Trotz, who's one of the best at, ever at doing that really. So I don't think that's going to favor Washington, even if they win the first game, they would have to win the first two games, probably the first two games. So Pearl, yeah. do you think that would be the same case? Do you think that would be whoever would win? Okay, let's do that. Who would, if whoever won the first two games, cause that's pretty much the way it is anyways, but I yeah. would give the Islanders a better chance of coming back. Um, yeah. However, if Holtby gets that kind of confidence, it's all going to come down to Holtby to me. If Holtby I agree. Plays, if Holtby plays like he has played in the past, yeah. the coaching may, may not matter. It may just give them enough confidence to be able to get over the Islanders. So, But as it stands, i got to go with the Islanders. So let's go on okay. to the next game. Okay. Colorado, Arizona, middle afternoon game starting tomorrow. This series, to me, is a uh, competition between two polar opposite teams, uh, for sure. Uh, Arizona, <laughs> very defensive, and Colorado, very offensive. What do you figure here, Steel Flyers? Uh, who do you think wins over, offense or defense here? Well, I picked Colorado to be my sleeper team. So, hmm, I think I have to go with Colorado on this one. I like the I like the offense better over the defense. Yeah. Um, I just do. I I like the combination of uh, Landis God and and I like what I like what Colorado's put on the ice as far as what they've done during the regular season. Now, they haven't exactly looked to the best in in this uh, little round robin series, right? They they did they finish higher or did they finish the same? I think they got the third seed. Second seed. Second seed. Second. Colorado. Second seed. Oh, they okay. Were they weren't they second? Yeah, they were I think, second. Yeah, they, they were, were second. second already. So, so they, they stayed, stayed right second, there. Okay, just cool. Like Tampa stayed at second. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, <clears throat> which means they still lost a game, or they didn't do enough to win it. They lost against Vegas and. Yeah, because Vegas swept you. And Vegas did what we did, right? They were the fourth seed going in, and then they did. They went through and and beat everybody to to the top. Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, I'm going with Colorado. I'm going with the offense. Um, I think their goaltending is going to be enough. I think their defense is going to be enough. I don't. Well, I like I said, I like Colorado to be a sleeper team, but I don't really see them going past second round. I mean, really? they might, yeah, they might win this round, but I, I'm, I'm actually, I, I actually think I'm going to, I think I'll go with, I'll go with Vegas as the West, but I'm still picking Colorado as a sleeper team, but I think they're going to get beat by, by Vegas. It'll be, I think it's going to be Vegas and Colorado in the, in the conference final. Of course, owing to how well I did the last time we picked, <laughs> our- it's a good thing I am not putting any money on this because all, we'll probably be us. completely wrong. All, but all I know we, yeah, we yeah. really, oh boy, that was bad. But I, I think Colorado is going to be enough offense to take care of it. Yeah. All right, yeah. Joe, what do you got? Buddy? Well, Colorado's defense is actually ranked a lot higher than people think. Their goals are loud with six. The, their shots on goal is a little low. It's out of the top 15 at 17. But their penalty kill is still right in the top 15 at 13. But what is going to be interesting for Colorado is they're a team that loves their power play, obviously, with all that skill. The PK of the Coyotes is fifth in the NHL. So it's going to be interesting if how the Coyotes' penalty kill, if they do – get Colorado on the power play stops them there. And they're also one of the top best defenses in the league in general, in terms of um, 
goals allowed because of Darcy Kemper and also Ronta stepped up for them in Kemper's absence. They just allow a good amount of shots on goals because they always don't know how to limit the yeah. first 10 minutes. And then after that, it's like Darcy Kemper, they have that like TV stoppage. And it's like, all right, boys, now it's time to actually start playing hockey. It seems like Darcy's done enough so far, so let's get going here. Uh, <laughs> but I think uh, – I think uh, they're actually, because of how well he came out of a firecracker, I picked them to get to the next round in the bracket I submitted and did. Uh, and then I have them losing to Vegas, obviously. But I did pick Kemper. Wait, getting- I had it pulled up. Oh, I had it pulled up. You're yes. Arizona to win the series? Yeah. I, I think, uh, think Arizona is going to upset them because I think just like Price figured out a way to get the Canadians past the Penguins, Darcy Kemper's that good. He'll figure out a way to get Arizona, who has a very solid defense, obviously, like I just brought up, past the uh, Avalanche. I think their limit their scores with their solid defense. Yeah, I'm checking out your I'm checking out your bracket right now, man. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. You, you still you are almost with me though. You're almost with me with Vegas. Yeah. On your bracket pick there, Joe. You're almost with me there on Vegas, but. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, what do you think, know. Perlo? What do you think, man? Do you think that? Do, do you think Colorado is gonna, or do you think it's gonna be uh, Arizona? Because you guys, we both tanked on Arizona picking them in the in the in the uh, first series. So I, no, I picked Arizona to beat Nashville. That was one of the ones I got right. So uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, if Kemper can get them past Colorado. Who knows where this team can go, honestly, because that's really what Kemper is. It's all Kemper on Arizona. They play a system completely that revolves around their goaltender, um, yeah. making sure that Kemper gets all the shots to his strengths as much as possible. Um, to me, I don't understand why Colorado is playing Grubauer. Enough with the Grubauer. Okay? And so to me, was the better goaltender in the regular season, and I think they should be playing uh, I think they should be playing uh, him now. Um, that's the only thing that worries I me. think it's Colorado, because of last year's playoffs, don't you think? Like, that's what my kind of friend, conv- that's what my one friend, Zach, convinced me of yesterday, when he said he did well in last year's playoffs, so Bednar's probably going, I'm going to go with the guy I know did pretty solid. He had quite a few quality starts, even though they didn't win. That was not his fault uh, that they didn't win that series. Um, I think he went with that, and I think I got convinced by my friend where I was kind of wanting to go with the hot hand, but then a little bit more experience. He also did well in the first – well, in the play, in the uh, round robin and everything, so I think they'll probably keep him until he stinks, and I don't know if that'll happen <laughs> because uh, I don't think I don't think that series is going to be Arizona winning with offense. That's going to be Arizona scoring two goals, three max, and then Darcy going. Yeah, I'm Darcy Kemper, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> if Arizona scores three goals on your uh, on your defense, you're in trouble. You <laughs> That's the thing. You, you can't have that. Um, I, I look at their offense with McKinnon and, you know, the big line, Landis Gongren and Kaj. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. They've got Nemeshnikov, uh, Burakovsky, all of that. I think that they'll find a way to win this. Um, after, like, it's just like after watching this, I'm pretty sure Tampa will beat Columbus now uh, as well. Uh, I think Colorado will likely run that, but I can see what you're saying, Joe, because Kemper scares me no matter what. It's also the yeah. energy, yeah. And they came in; they're coming in gunning. They they're coming in as the lowest team. Nobody expected them to win, and, and look who they beat. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I, also their energy because I watch a lot of those different interviews when they have all the post game stuff on the NHL and everything, and those guys seem very confident after that round, and they seem like they basically are ready to run through a brick wall and continue playing at that for their, their coaches like that. Well, yeah, because Rick Tockett's a guy that will always run through a brick wall and play for his coach. So yeah, that, that rubs off that personality. So he's another good young coach. And I think this speaks volumes to that because you had a GM, you had the issues upstairs. Your coach kept everybody in line and got it past it now. And he might get you past it, in my opinion, this round too. So 
Britt talk it and uh yeah is definitely a great coach but so is bednar so it's it's a yeah. it, I, I don't know that's yeah. going to be an inter- interesting watch to see the two but that's a I great coaching matchup yeah i agree yeah, yeah. i certainly don't think this is going to be like a like in five this is going to be six or seven games probably i agree like with that, that. yeah um, yeah with that it's going to be close. It's going to be it's going to be fun to watch. Actually. Yeah. I well, I mean, watch. they it's it's one of those things where Colorado is the higher ranked seed, even though. But I think with with what Joe pointed out that because of Arizona and their the way their style of play, how they've been able to come out and beat the team they were able to beat and get to where they are right now and with the coach that they have. I can see why you would, would go with them, but I, I just I just think that Colorado's gonna be a little a little too much for that. So but I I also agree. I think it's gonna go the full distance. I'll I'll say seven games on this one no matter what. Yeah, for me it's also the goalie matchup because even if Fran Swozen he's still not a vet and he's not a guy that's had back to back years of showing he's a Vezina contender. So, yeah. I mean, I still picked Darcy Kemper over him at this point, even though I love the guy. So I can't, I'm not picking him yet over Darcy Kemper. Darcy Kemper's a beast. I showed Pierlo it on the one pocket. I think I have a picture of him over here. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember so, seeing that uh, picture. <laughs> yeah, he's a beast. Uh, I think that's why he's going to win him the series along with Tockett. This is a great coaching and goalie matchup because Gruby looks good when Gruby looks good he can do well and then Francois we spoke volumes of him already yeah yeah I'm a big Kemper fan too and I would like to see Arizona win this for many reasons for the fans in Arizona for the league for everything but for Darcy Kemper to get the notoriety he deserves because he well like Smith before him Smith didn't get the notoriety he deserved for how great of a goaltender he was yeah because he played in Arizona and yeah. I, want Kemper, I don't want Kemper to have that in his career. I would like him to be known for what he is. He's one of the best goaltenders of this of this generation. Well, it's spread to Philly because it also, I mean, Steve on our Flyers podcast completely agreed with me too on Kemper and so did Rob. So, you know, it's spreading over here. So I hope it's spreading out west and then we'll just spread it in the middle and then everybody will know how good Darcy Kemper is. Darcy <laughs> Kemper is amazing. Yeah. Anyways, boys and girls, that's our full 42%. I know we got – Joe has to take off. I know you can listen to us for hours, but honestly, we really do have to stop. Joe's <laughs> super busy, uh, crazy, and so should he be. Well, everybody should want to talk to Joe. He's amazing. And uh, so everybody, what's uh, Steel, Fly- Steel Flyers? Could you uh, let everybody know about that wonderful website and everything else you got going on there, bud? Yeah, man. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Um, please hit the like and subscribe. Um, please follow these two guys here, man. Pearl of Wisdom, you got to follow this guy. And Joe Bork, you definitely got to be uh, on this guy here for sure, man, because these guys are some of the best. And uh, I'm just honored and privileged to be here. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter, Steel Flyers uh, 52 And uh, also, you can check out the website, One One Stop Shop www.steelflyers.com you can come out there and check out all the podcasts and all the videos of both of these guys right here all of their stuff is all linked up to that website so you can check out all their latest videos and get linked to them on their twitters and all their accounts and everything like that it's one stop shop come check it out yeah joe what are you doing right what do you got to go to right now uh that would be after this game is over, but now with how bad the Phillies bullpen is, it might be longer. So uh, it would be the Chase and the Pennant uh, podcast, but that's a baseball podcast I do for the Always Next Year, which is where the Disciples of Ed is. And uh, True but Philadelphia good. Sportscast, where these two great gentlemen appear on a lot. And Sports Fanatic News is the YouTube spelt with a P for the Philly Fanatic. And also Overtime Heroics and Pub Sports Radio. Great stuff on those sites as well as Flyers Nitty Gritty. But enjoy all the great hockey, everybody. I mean, who would have thought a five-overtime game in the first game of a series? And then another, actually a better game in the Dallas-Calgary series, I would have thought, a 3-2 game, a little bit yeah, better. Yeah, turned out really so, nice. Yeah, keep enjoying all the great hockey, everyone. There's another game coming up in about 20 minutes. In Boston, Carolina tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Thank you all for a lot watching. Um, I'm not deep how picks you guys all know that I'll put that down there so you can make some money out of my little thing that I do. Everybody have a great day. Glad to have you. Lots of love to you.